Welcome back, everyone, to Nano is a Dun. I'm your host, Dominic, and we have a match now between Stellas and Athos. Athon. Stellas and Athon on Obsidian. So let's go! Obsidian map we haven't seen very often because it has only just been added to the matchmaking pool. It's actually something I was trying to get today with replays, is maps that have just been added to the matchmaking pool because there's been some rotations. And Obsidian is one of the maps added in, and frankly, I think the that and Otago are the two maps I think are really good. Shimmer Shore is also added in. That's a very sea-heavy map, which is a very sea-heavy map. People don't really want to play it yet. It's not a bad idea to have it just for testing purposes, but it's going to be ish interesting and kind of tricky. Anyway, Stella's going for the Jump Bot Factory, while we're seeing Amphibs from Athon. Interesting choice. I wouldn't have expected Amphibs, but sure, why not? So, a couple ducks coming forward, going on the main line. This is the thing about this map. This, this line here... That's kind of the main way this map ends up working, is you have this one line between the two sides, between the two player start boxes, and most of the work is done there. I mean, bots can go up and down these cliffs, so it's not a big deal for anyone to move around, at least with bot factories, but it's still going to be kind of interesting because the bot factories right now, I mean, they're not really building a whole lot of units, and none of the units are super cheap. So sending units around the sides to expand and harass, that's not going to happen for another couple minutes just because of how expensive most of the units in these factories are. Like, puppies might, but we aren't seeing any of those. And ducks probably won't, although... Ooh, oh! Nice little homing missile thing there. Pyro jump didn't quite make it. But hey, got some value out of it anyway. Still, that was... That was a neat little exchange. Still, though, Stellus, I'd say, is slightly ahead in terms of overall pressure. I mean, the second power coming in there, causing even more grief... And there's a dodge, and ah, uh, that's that's a proper dodge. Does manage to avoid most of the damage. Gets a hit by splash, but hey, that's fine. That's fine. The pyro does survive thanks to that jump, and can actually go in and harass. That's exactly what Stella's wanted. Get those jumps in. Even if the splash damage does ultimately hit you. And another ooh, nice, nice timing of that jump. Man, Stella's has really been practicing their jump micro apparently. Because that's not the easiest thing to do, especially not when you're dealing with what is it? Actually, what is the ping on this? Yeah, 500 millisecond ping. That's actually kind of tricky to time out. But no, that those are some really well-timed jumps. So nice. I'm not sure the trees actually block the projectiles. I think they don't. But I'm not sure. However, on the other hand, archers do win in this case. I mean, it's water against fire. I wish we have seen before that fire beats water. Way in the past, I casted another game that was Jumpbot versus Amphib, and the Pyros kept winning against Archers. But I think it was before Archers got massively buffed. At this point, I wouldn't be surprised if the if Water does in fact beat Fire now, rather than the other way around as it seemed to have been. Anyway, though, Athon finally managed to push away some of the pressure. The one thing working out well for them is they have expanded reasonably well in the back. So they do manage to actually get through, and Water does indeed beat Fire, so good to know. But they have managed to expand in the back, whereas, see here, Stellas started out further forward, but hasn't taken the backyard expansion. Athon started out in the back, and surprisingly enough, despite what I usually say about how starting forward's an advantage, Stellas hasn't taken advantage of that until just now. Like, now that they're going to take advantage of it, they will have 21 middle per second, and Athon's going to have to work that much harder to get the frontal expansion and then build up. But Stellas was not taking advantage of the advantage they had. That's actually given Athon a fair bit of room to play with. They're not that far behind economically. In fact, the main thing they need right now is to put one of those workers onto factory assist or build a caretaker. Either way, they need to do something to actually build up their their production because they are kind of starting to get close to accessing. Especially as they build more and more metal extractors, they are really going to start needing to get some kind of build assist going on in their factory. These conches are not going to be able to build up anything else, like build up their own metal extractors or whatever else quickly enough to avoid excess unless... This one that's reclaiming the energy starts building up, or this conch being built right now starts assist building. Same time, though, we do have Athon pushing in here with a few archers and doing a fair bit of damage, even with the slow beam coming in here, managing to push through the frontal expansion reasonably well. Stellus's commander, with the light particle beam, able to push them away, able to stop the assault, but losing a worker in the process. And a few static defenses. So if there was another wave of units coming in here, which... Looks like there's not quite. Athon is continuing to build units, but they haven't quite set up the units they'd need to really push. And they're accessing! They're accessing that low! I mean, I get why they have someone to reclaim for energy to get the energy in, but still, like, don't be accessing metal. Get the caretakers. There we go. Get the caretakers up. 
Get some more energy structures as well. Like, seriously, get wind generators. This this area right here is prime. This area here is prime for wind generators. 1.4, 1.5 minimum? That is super valuable. Yes, I get it that Stellas could push in and start attacking with the Pyros, but still, if you can make those survive anywhere on this mountain ridge, which is pretty much most of the map, you can get loads of energy. Like, all the energy you need for basically nothing. So I don't know why we're not seeing Athon go for that, but if we did, that would be a huge shift in their economic strength. Although Stellas is also not going for that, just going for more solar collectors themselves. Still, though, like, remember, wind is better on high ground. And this map has got a lot of high ground. If like, the lowest ground, sure, 0.3, kind of meh. But the higher ground, there's so much room. You just go ham with this. Just build all the wind generators. I'd love to see more of that. But we're not seeing that right now. But yeah, whoever does that first is going to have such a massive energy advantage. And I think if Athlon does that first, they're going to be able to actually take advantage of the metal they have. Because I like the fact that they have the caretaker. That's good. But they need so much more energy. Or they can reclaim trees, as people were as people have been pointing out, and they were doing earlier. Either way, I don't care. Just, they need the energy. That's the key thing. Actually, this conch goes and starts building trees. Or sorry, reclaiming trees. The caretaker is going to try, but it won't have the range. Like I'll be able to reclaim some of them, but not most of them. I mean, that's something at least. That will help briefly, but like use that to then start building up more energy. Like use that to build more energy structures. Or more conscious to reclaim more trees. Because like, bear in mind, reclaiming is often going to... It's, I believe, going to prioritize metal. And, well, okay, they are going for wind generators. Not where I expect them to, but... Eh, at least it's something. At any rate, though, Stellus is going to have to deal with that again. Because there are more archers coming in here. Athon is setting up to try to attack. But Obsidian is one of those maps where you don't get a whole lot of... They did manage to harass quite a bit along the north side... Get rid of quite a few metal extractors. Going around the back here, these ducks will run into some problems. The, I think that Pickett's... Yeah, Pickett's not enough. Though further back... Ooh, there is that Lotus being built up, but it's not done yet. The ducks should be able to push in and actually kill the Lotus before it's even close to done, but it looks like... Is Athon being scared of it? It looks like they might be a little bit. The ducks should be able to stop that. Yeah, there it is. Put a stop to that. Maybe put a stop to the Constable as well, but the slow beam makes it that much harder. Constable slow beam and ah no the ducks you're doing so well you were doing so well at avoiding friendly fire but no that duck betrayed its kin wanted to both kill steel and take all the glory for itself and just, just tell everyone it's like no 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 it's fine it's fine they they died it's sad but hey I managed to heroically kill off one of the metal charges before being burned to death by pyros so it didn't do you any good anyway you selfish duck. I mean, seriously, that other duck had survived. This entire expansion probably would have been dead by now. Just for the amount of firepower that would, have been that would have been added in. The amount of damage that would have been added in. Still, that is giving Athon a lot of room to work with. I do kind of wish they put this on the mountains, but... Hey, that gives them a lot of room to work with. They have more energy now. They have the characters to build up. They have some conscious as well, which I would recommend using to help build this as well. But hey, they are at least building up their energy structures and getting their economy going reasonably quickly. They just need more caretakers now. They're actually in the opposite position. They need more build power, and they're so far ahead of Stellos in terms of actual metal economy that really, one or two minutes with this, if that, if they got the caretakers up to actually help use the build power they've gotten so far, they'd be in a great position. And they are indeed building those caretakers up. They Because, I mean, you kind of have to at this point. But yeah, once they get that... Man, Stellas is going to be so far behind economically that one raid over here alongside the commander and the one conch building up their metal economy over to the side, that has done them wonders. Now, that is an absolute wonder for Athon in terms of how much they can actually build up. Stellas is managing to rebuild some things, but they haven't rebuilt the backside of their base, and they haven't really rebuilt this mountainous pass here. I mean, they can't. Every time they try to, they've just keep running into more and more resistance. At this point, they finally stabilized at someone. They could theoretically put a worker up the back, get these metal extractors back into their control, but I don't know that they're even focusing on that. Now they are. Okay, good. They do have that queued up. So they're definitely going to try to rebuild, but at this point, Athon has built up so much. Surprisingly, no grizzlies. Focusing much more on archers and scallops. Not so much on grizzlies, which is an interesting choice. I, mean, I think that's why the gauss turrets are here, 
is because they were expecting to have to deal with Grizzlies. But nope, not the case at all. Mass Archer instead. Which, admittedly, not as good at dealing with Gauss anyway. I think Grizzly actually would have an easier time just because 1,500 damage in one shot is plenty. But still, I mean, enough of an army, large enough economy, you could actually still build up enough units to make that not a problem. And if you boys as well, if you get the boys up, that means the shield is no longer a problem because the slow damage deals a bunch of extra damage to the shielding. So Stellus's area shield would just not do them any good. Man, if Stellus loses their commander, that is going to be the death blow. Well, admittedly, Athon also put a lot of econ a lot of metal into their commander as well. And the wait, Lazarus device? They have a Lazarus device and they haven't used it yet? That's surprising. Man, we don't see that much. Resurrecting units kind of fell out of fashion once Conscious stopped being able to do it. And also, once changes happened to the way the commanders worked, it, it I mean, you don't see it very often. It'd be kind of cool if we did see it used up, though. Because, hey, resurrecting units, that's that's kind of cool. Get pyros in your side, or, I don't know, rebuild damaged metal extractors in your own favor. It, it, you don't use it very often. I'm Actually, I'm really stretching, because you don't see them. No one builds them. Not a thing. You just usually build more units, unless you really want to take your opponent's units. Like, unless Athon really wants a pyro. I mean, if there was a sumo or something, or one of the, or they built a grizzly and the grizzly died, I could totally see the Lazarus device being used to make that happen. Because it'd be a cheaper way of doing it. But, otherwise, I don't see it happening. Or at least, I don't see it happening with the commander as far off to the side as they are. That's where the trouble comes in. Speaking of trouble, though, Athon getting harassed from several sides by Pyros. I mean, they aren't completely out of the woods on this, but still, it's just a matter of this contain. Stellus is having a difficult time building up beyond what they currently have. And anything they're trying to do is just being destroyed by what Athon has for expansion, for harassment, for frontline forces. I am surprised Athon has not built up any Grizzlies. I think they might be trying to see, can I win without Grizzlies? Just boy, scallop, archer. I've never seen anyone do this before, but it might actually work. Although, with the Raven support, that's also kind of a moot point, because now you just have enough Ravens you can take out the commander directly. So, I don't know. Or not quite. You need, you'd need ten. Or, not ten. You need nine. Or, no, not nine. Seven. You need seven. I, well, you actually would need nine or so, because just the amount of anti-air defense that's being built up. It's not going to be a trivial walk in the park of just go to the commander and hit them with a bunch of bombs. I'd say 9 or 10 just to avoid the defenses and have 7 actually hit the commander. But that's the thing, though. They have some Braves going around the sides. Athon should be able to tear apart the sides here, destroying what Stellas has rebuilt for their economy, and at the same time, just making it impossible for Stellas to really attack from the front. And especially the boys coming in here, just making it even harder by actually not really doing much. They're slowing down one of the Gauss turrets, which has been forced to close. I guess just to distract the enemy forces, but no, it's not enough. That Nope. Athos, Athon is definitely paying attention. Stellus is going to lose all this. Faraday's going down. Stardust going down. Everything being slowed to a crawl because that's what boys do. And that opens everything up. There's There are the ravens. How many of those are there? There are nine of them. And they can't find the commander. But hey, there are nine of them. At least they can hit something. Deal some damage. Nope. No, it looks like... Looks like Athens just going to wait until they actually find the commander proper and then go for the kill. You got a whole fire or something? What's wrong with you? Oh, I see. Tree in the way of one of them and wreckage in the way of the other. Really? That's that's in your way? Uh, okay, whatever. Sure, why not? I, I don't know. It's really bizarre. At any rate, though, that is the commander down. At Stellis' commander down got screwed up by the zoom control. Ah, Stellis' commander down. That should be. I think Stellis is going to throw in the towel here. I don't see them lasting much longer. Their economy is so far behind. Their commander was a massive investment. And they have their opponent on every single front door. Like, I think... I think this is game. I don't know. Stellas might try to go for one last-ditch counterattack. And it looks like that is exactly what they're trying to do. Some power is over to the northwest. Destroying what economy they can. Maybe they'll... Maybe they'll find something. If they kill Athon's commander, they at least get a moral victory. I don't see them actually winning at that point. I mean, they're still so far behind economically that they have to rebuild everything on the sides and actually keep that alive for a reasonably long time, as well as destroying Athon's forces, and that's not likely happening, especially with all the ravens coming in here that can basically just destroy everything. I would like to see an air pad be built up just to make sure that it's a bit faster for these ravens to get back in the fight. 
But, yeah, it's not mattering too much. I mean, Athon's commander... Nah, they're good. That Stardust, that saved them. They're fine. They're fine. This is it. Athon's... I mean, unless there's something I'm missing. Stellas, they have a third of the economy. They have a potential chance to rebuild, but they don't have much in the way of anti-air, and they don't have much in the way of production that's actually being used to build metal extractors, so I don't see how they'd be getting back in here. They are still trying, though. I will give them that. I will commend them on that. I don't think they realize how far behind they are. But hey, that is that. So, I mean, boys coming in here, boys and ducks. That is something the Pyros have been doing reasonably well against, but I'm not so sure anymore. Even Like, the sheer amount of ducks coming in here, and the jumps not being timed properly. We saw earlier, Stellas' jump micro is really good with single Pyros to save them, but multiple Pyros jumping in like that? Generally speaking, don't jump in. I mean, that's a thing that's kind of true in any game that gives you an escape ability that's of limited use. Don't use it to enter the fight. Use it to leave the fight should you need to. At any rate, though, that is going to be Athos... Athon... Ah, that's better. That's going to be Athon likely taking this fight. I don't see Stellas managing to win this unless... they start actually using things, building things. Going for the Strider Hub. Going for a last-ditch effort. Interesting. I am surprised they haven't started to rebuild some of the metal extractors that they can nearby. But... Strider Hub's a thing? I mean, it might work for something... Unfortunately, they have no caretakers, so even with the money they do have, they actually can't spend all of it. That sucks. I mean, they're they're accessing at a 3-to-1 metal disadvantage. I just... Yeah, that that's kind of... That is a bad spot to be in. With the factory going down as well, this likely will be game. I don't think Stellas is going to want to continue any further. Like, if they built a couple of caretakers here, they might have had a chance to get... Well, if they built the caretakers by the factory, they would have been able to use the metal that they got. They... Don't really have characters here to build the Strider Hub. I'm not really sure what the expectation is because, again, they're going to be coming in here and, what, building a Dante? Trying to use that to run up against, like, 10,000 metal worth of units? I don't see it. I'm really sorry, I don't see it. I, I think Athon's trying to figure out, okay, what the hell is going on? Why is Stella still in this match? What am I missing? Where Where are they? And the answer is, they're right here, building a Strider Hub, thinking that somehow a Scorpion or a Dante is going to save them. At this stage in the game. With 20 metal per second. So it's going to take like 2 minutes to build anyway. I'm, again, not really in agreement with this approach. But now that it's been spotted, I think Stellas is going to throw in the towel finally. Oh, really? Okay, so people are pointing out that wrecks actually are taller than I think, and unit cannons are lower down than I think. Fair enough. I mean, that this is a game where line of sight is massively important, so... Can't say I'm terribly surprised. And yeah, this... Stellus, I'm really not sure. Yeah, Strider Hub. Strider Hub, desperate, desperate play Strider Hub. But no, that, there's the towel thrown. Stellus was destroyed pretty early on, and... I mean, they held on reasonably well, but it's just... One of those situations where the early economic disadvantage never really went away. Like, Athon... Athon was kind of ahead the entire time. They had, I think... Yeah, they were reasonably even early on... There were some points where I wasn't entirely sure, but then it just... Yeah, Athon skyrocketed after that, so... There you go, Athon taking that fairly effectively. And that is going to be it for replays. I'm... Yeah, I don't know. I'm just thinking what I want to do. If I want to do any more stuff, or what. Uh, uh, I don't know. I mean, let's see. Are there people playing stuff going on? Eh. I don't really feel like waiting for matchmaking. Alright, I think that'll be it for me now. I'm Apologies, I just tired. <laughs> so anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. And it's good to see some new players getting good at the game. So anyway, have a good night until Monday. Oh, Wesley, I'm just tired. <laughs> Sorry.